All right, what's going on guys? Welcome to the Doves of Reality Show. Today, I'm gonna to tell you why you're gonna be vegan by 2030, maybe even 2035, with this new revolution in technology and modern foods. I'm gonna get into the facts, I'm gonna get into all the juicy details, so stay tuned. Now, if you're new here to the channel, make sure you hit that red button below and subscribe for more videos like this. We talk about consciousness, we talk about spirituality, we talk about how you fix your daily routine and how you become your best self. So listen, if you've got something to share, if you've got an opinion, if you're vegan or if you're a meat eater, do you believe what I'm saying? Go out and check out the report yourself. Let me know in the comments what you think. So listen, the information that I'm gonna share with you today comes from a report by Rethink X. Now this is a private organization made up of Silicon Valley experts. It is based on research and opinion in line with the exponential technology curves that are happening today. So this report is specifically about animal agriculture and the limits that we've now reached in today's modern world. Now the animal agriculture industry is going to get disrupted with technology. This happens across the board. Now, the current system has reached maximum capacity of efficiency, of scale, and of production. So what do we do next? So listen, it's pretty clear that animal agriculture is destroying this planet. We live in a biosphere, right? We have an ecosystem. And when we destroy our ecosystem, we are essentially destroying ourselves because we cannot live without it. And the food that we choose to put in our mouths and on our plates makes a massive difference to what happens to our environment and also what happens to our health and the animals. And listen, I understand not everybody's gonna go vegan in the classical sense, they're gonna stop eating meat. There is another alternative. Now, I'm all for vegan advocacy, but the truth is people just aren't gonna switch overnight like that. The concept of eating dead animal flesh, of eating meat, is something that is deeply rooted in culture. And this isn't gonna shift overnight. People love the taste, the texture, the mouthfeel, and sometimes even the ritual involved in hunting and killing. So what we need to do and what technology is enabling us to do today is to create an alternative that satisfies everything a meat lover wants from their meat, but without all the detrimental effects on the environment, on health and on the animals. So what am I talking about here? Well, you've all heard about the Impossible Burger, right? And Beyond Burger. Now these are plant-based alternatives. Now they're using a specific kind of precision fermentation technology that I'm gonna get into more deeply in this video to create specific microorganisms that give meat the specific taste, smell and texture. So when we combine these ingredients with plant-based ingredients, we can actually get pretty damn close to the real thing. Now, there's been taste tests done all over the world and people are genuinely surprised. I've seen videos on YouTube of hardcore carnivore meat eaters actually taste an Impossible Burger and a regular burger and they think the Impossible Burger is actually the real thing. So we've got to a stage where we're almost on par with an actual burger. Now, the thing is animal agriculture, that's really not gonna get any more efficient. But the technology that we're using today is only gonna get better. So the taste is gonna improve, the mouthfeel is gonna improve, the whole experience is gonna be exactly like the experience you get with meat. And this isn't just beef, this is gonna roll out to chicken, pork, fish, and dairy as well. So this is a really exciting space. It's the reason why Impossible Burgers are worth $2 billion, because people know it's the future. Even Tyson Foods, the biggest producer of meat in the US, have invested in companies like this. Now, we have the plant-based alternatives, but we also have the lab-grown meat as well. So this is actually real meat grown in the lab, but there is no animals killed in the process. So as a vegan, I think this is a real amazing step forward because no animals have to be killed in the process of producing the meat products that people love and will continue to consume into the future. So why will you be vegan by 2030, maybe even 2035? So listen, I mentioned precision fermentation earlier. Now the thing is, this is not a new process. Precision fermentation has been used to create the alternative to insulin. Now insulin was originally produced from the pancreas of cows and pigs. Now typically it would take 50,000 animals to produce just one kilogram of insulin. 
Now with today's technology, with precision fermentation, we're able to do that in a lab without any animals getting killed in the process. And this new technology is gonna come down in price, meaning that meat is gonna come down in price. It's gonna be cheaper than the meat that you buy in the supermarket today. It's also gonna be cheaper than the organic grass-fed beef, chicken, whatever you consume. So you see, when you take a macro organism like a cow, it takes a lot of resources, water, feed, and the feed needs water and attention from humans. The cows also produce a lot of methane and a lot of waste. And what we do today is we take that macroorganism and we break it down into its individual constituent parts and we sell those off and we consume them. Now, typically a cow is 4% efficient on the feedstock that is provided. That's incredibly inefficient. It's probably one of the most inefficient ways to produce food on this planet today. But meat consumption and the demand for meat is on the rise and it's completely impossible to cater for that demand on a global basis. So when we create foods in the lab using precision fermentation, we typically get about a 60 to 80% efficiency from the feedstock to the final product. So that's a big leap and I'm gonna share with you some numbers that are really gonna blow your mind. Now, I'm not saying that these are gonna be super, super accurate, but these are just estimations and projections based on the reports, based on the data that's being crunched, and based on today's numbers. So what do we get from animals, right? Well, basically, we're looking for protein. Now, with the precision fermentation and the lab-based meats, the cost of protein is gonna come down by five times by 2030, and even 10 times by 2035, which has massive implications, not just on the West, but on the entire world, being able to feed people in poorer areas that really just cannot afford the quantities of meat that the West consume. It's also the production of beef and dairy by 2030, will fall by 50% and 2035 by 90%. Now this is obviously good news for the environment. And by 2035, 50% of the land currently used by livestock and currently used to grow the crops that get fed to the livestock will be freed. Now, this is obviously gonna have a lot of impacts economically for farmers and people that are involved in the industry, but they have to move with the times. Now, imagine if we were to reforest the land that became available, just specifically in the US, what would happen? So if we were to reforest all of that land, the US would be carbon neutral by 2035. Now, sounds crazy, but this is just some of the projections that could be possible if we make this shift. So modern food production methods, including the precision fermentation that I've been talking about, will be up to 100 times more efficient and effective than normal livestock production. It will be 10 to 25 times more feedstock efficient. It will be 20 times more time efficient and 10 times more water efficient. You know, one third of the fresh water in the US goes to the crops and for the cattle industry. Now water, if you take California for example, water is scarce, all the fresh water is pumped in. Las Vegas, a city in the desert, right? The water is pumped in. Sooner or later we're gonna come to a crisis. So if we can reduce the amount of water used in these animal agriculture businesses, then it's gonna have a massive impact on the quality of living and the security of the people in these cities where the water is piped in. This industry will also produce an order of magnitude less waste, which is incredibly amazing because we have all these hormones, all these antibiotics that are excreted by these animals. They get run off and they go into the rivers, into the oceans, they create dead zones. It's just really not a good thing to be doing to our environment. We've seen the destruction. We know things need to change. People are focusing on climate change, but you know, the real problem here is the destruction that we're doing to our ecosystem with animal agriculture. So I just spoke about climate change. Well, the animal agriculture is one of the biggest polluters in the world. Now, if we implement these changes that I'm sharing with you today, then the industry could reduce its emissions by 45% by 2030. And think about it, this is gonna slow down and stop deforestation, which is a massive issue right now in the Amazon. We've lost so much of that precious resource. And finally, we should be able to take back control of our planet. 
You've heard about the six extinction event. We've killed off more species and destroyed more ecological habitats than we could have ever imagined. And this has caused massive destruction and poses a real threat to humanity on this planet. So listen, this is just a small amount of the information that is contained in this report. Now, I do encourage you to go out and do your own research because this is something that could revolutionize the planet. And I think because of the way economics are going, this is something that is gonna happen. Now, how fast it will happen and whether the brakes will be put on comes down to a few things. It comes down to public support and consumer decisions. Where are you placing your money? Where are you spending your money? You see, I think most people are on board with plant-based and lab-grown meats. I think most people would choose that over an actual dead animal. I also think that most people are against animal cruelty. Now, when you make the comparison, you know, would you slaughter a dog for its meat? That analogy is exactly the same as when you go and buy some beef. So you're paying somebody else to kill that animal. And I think most people would choose the alternative purely based on ecological reasons, because it's better for the animals, it's better for humans, and ultimately it's gonna help the planet. Now, I just wanna to touch on one final thing, and this is, again, kind of controversial because there is this massive vegan versus keto versus eating meat debate. Now, I'm not gonna get into that debate, but the thing is, if we are able to produce plant-based meats and lab-grown meats, it means we avoid the hormones, we avoid the antibiotics, and we're able to carefully control what goes in those products, ultimately leading to improvements in health, specifically diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and high blood pressure. And the impact on the economy from this perspective is gonna be huge. Governments all over the world are gonna save collectively trillions of dollars in healthcare costs, purely because the quality of the food that people are putting in their bodies is much, much higher. And we can control the ingredients that we're putting into our bodies. So that just about wraps up this video. I hope you found this information interesting. I hope you're curious to find out more. Go check out the report. I'm gonna leave that link in the description below. And let me know your thoughts. Uh, this is probably a controversial topic, I don't know. But let me know what you think below in the comments. And if you feel like sharing this with a friend, go ahead and listen. Thanks for joining me today. And I'll catch you on the flip side. Peace. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I know your time is extremely valuable. So if you've enjoyed today's content, please consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell so you get a notification next time I release another one of these videos. You can also leave me a comment below and let me know what part of this video resonated the most with you or simply click that like button to let me know you enjoy this content. And if you wanna get your hands on a free 12 minute guided meditation that I recorded to help you manifest your dreams and create whatever you want in your life, go ahead and click the link in the description for your free download. And if you wanna check out all the latest blog posts on my blog, dabsofreality.com, the link is down there below as well, along with my Instagram and my Facebook page if you wanna consider following me on those platforms. Until next time, catch you on the flip side.